Hello everyone, welcome to another Stata tutorial video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use basic fixed effects models in Stata. The data set that I have here is the crime two data set. This data set shows the number of crimes in a variety of cities in two years, 1982 and 1987. Along with that, we have some other basic pieces of information about each of those places. We have the population, unemployment rate, number of police officers, uh, and so forth. From a policy standpoint, we may be interested in the relationship between the unemployment rate and the number of crimes in a particular city. One thing to take note of here is the ID variable, which indicates which city it is we're talking about, with each individual city assigned a unique number. Each city shows up twice in the data set, once for 1982 and once for 1987. You can see here that the D87, that is the dummy variable indicating 1987, goes from zero to one, zero to one, and that corresponds with pairs of numbers in the ID column. Let's start out with a very basic regression. We're, we're just going to regress the crime rate, that is the crimes per 1,000 people, on the unemployment rate, and then the dummy variable for year. By including this dummy variable, we are accounting for unobserved factors that are changing between the two years. The important thing to remember though is that these effects are assumed to be nationwide effects that affect all of the cities equally. What we're missing out on though is individual effects that are unique to each city. These are what we call unobserved heterogeneities. By not accounting for these, we may have bias in our estimates. The way that we deal with this is fixed effects. There are two ways to handle fixed effects. The first is called the dummy variable method. This is pretty simple to implement. Here, we run the regression as before, but I'm now going to add in one more term in this equation. I'm gonna put I dot ID. If you've watched my categorical variables video, you'll have seen this structure before. What this is going to do is create temporary dummy variables for each of the ID numbers using ID number one as the base. Our regression results now have 45 new dummy variables being added to the equation. If we compare the results, we can see that the relationship between unemployment and crime rate is actually bigger than before, meaning that the unobserved heterogeneity had a big effect. Another thing you'll notice is that when we use dummy variable estimation, we end up with a very, very big R squared, in this case, 89%. Compare that with about 1% before. The reason for this is that we've allowed every single pair of observations in this data set to get a customized coefficient, which is actually adding significantly to the predictive power. The problem with this is that that doesn't carry information. We're simply allowing each city to be different, and that is doing most of the explaining here without us actually knowing what is driving that. For that reason, we generally think of the dummy variables, large R squared, as being highly inflated relative to the actual information that we have. The way that we deal with this is an estimation method called the within estimator. How the within estimator works is that we calculate the within group means for each of the cross-sectional identifiers, in this case cities, and we subtract that off the value for all of the variables. What occurs here is that since each of these dummy variables is not changing over time, so city two, it remains city two in 1982 and 1987, when we subtract the mean off of that, all of these dummy variables drop out of the model. And all we're left with is the demeaned crime rate and the demeaned unemployment rate. Let's go ahead and calculate those variables. I'm gonna use eGen to do this. First, I'm going to calculate the within group means for both variables. So I'm going to egen crime rate mean equals 
the mean of crime rate. I'm not done yet though, because if I ran this, I would get the same mean for the entire data set. I want to go by ID. I'm gonna do the same thing for the unemployment. Let's check out the data browser and see how this worked. You can see that for our new variables, we have the mean crime rate for each city. So that's calculating the average between the 1982 crime rate and the 1987 crime rate. And then the same thing for the unemployment. You can see that these come in pairs unique to each city. The next step is to calculate the demeaned variables. To do this, I'm going to generate new variables and I'm going to call these crime rate star and unemployment star. To do this, I'm going to take the original crime rate and subtract the within city mean and do the same thing for unemployment. Let's check out the data browser again. Now you can see here, I've got the amount that each of the values deviates from the mean. And here, since we only have two values, by definition, one will be above the mean, one will be below the mean by the same amount. If you have more than two time periods, you'll get a little bit more variance here. Now what I'm gonna do is run a regression of these new variables, so crime rate star on unum star. We'll throw in the time dummy as well. When I run this regression, what we notice is that the estimate for unum star is 2.218. If we go back to our dummy variable method, that matches up exactly. And the same thing is true for the time dummy, which was 15.4 and is still 15.4. What is different though is the constant term because we have changed the interpretation of the constant. You'll also notice that the multitude of dummy variables are now gone, but despite that, we have the exact same estimates. Along with that, the R squared has gone down to a much more reasonable level, about 20% here. Now the downside of this is that if we were actually interested in these individual city effects, we aren't able to measure those in the within estimator. However, you can also see that if our data set is very large, which has a lot of cross-sectional units, the dummy variable method becomes computationally intensive and in some cases is going to become infeasible. For this reason, the within estimator is generally the more common of the two. Now that we've learned how to do this the manual way, I'm gonna show you how to handle this with the built-in panel data tools in Stata. The first thing we need to do is actually set up Stata so that it knows that our data is a panel. The command for this is xtset. When we run xtset, we need to specify first, what is the cross-sectional identifier? In this case, our ID numbers and then we tell it what our time variable is. In this case, it is the D87. If you have more than two time periods, you'll generally want to construct a T variable that goes one, two, three, uh, and so forth. Once I've run this, Stata understands that we're working with a panel and that these are our two dimensions. From here, I'm ready to run an XT regression. This is the command that we use in Stata when we want to run a fixed effects model. I'll now put in the variables just like before. I'll put crime rate, unemployment, and D87. Note that these are the original variables and not the starred variables that I created before. I'm now going to add an option, FE, and this tells Stata that we want to use fixed effects with the within estimator. When I run this, you'll notice that we get the exact same estimates for unemployment and the time dummy as both of our other regressions. You'll also see that the R squared is the same that we got before. Before we end this video, I want to briefly talk about first differencing. First differencing is an alternative way to 
approach panel data. When we have just two time periods like we do here, first differencing and fixed effects will give you the exact same estimates. However, it's important to remember that when we have more than two time periods, three, four, and so on, that first differencing and fixed effects, whether that's by dummy variable or by within estimator, will give you different answers. And which one is better depends on the nature of the data itself. First differencing relies on running a regression not on the actual levels of the data, but the change in the data between the two years. The first thing we need to do is actually go ahead and calculate those differences. This again requires us to have set up Stata to understand that we have a panel data set. So you're gonna to have to run XT set just like before. We've already done that, so I'm just gonna go right ahead. To calculate the difference, I'm going to gen D crime rate, D for delta, which is used for change, equals crime rate minus L1 dot crime rate. L1 is the one period lag modifier. This will tell us the change in the crime rate from the current period to the previous period. You can see that when I ran this, 46 missing values were generated. If I go into the data browser, we can see why this is. You can see the D crime rate only has a value for the 1987 values. The reason for this is that we were taking current value minus the previous one. And since 1982 did not have a previous year, this is undefined. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the unemployment. You can see in the data browser that we also are missing 1982 for this change variable. Now I can run a regression of the change in crime rate on the change in unemployment. Now I could add in D87 here, our dummy variable, but remember that this is actually just going to drop out because all of the observations are now from 1987 since there was no previous year to 1982. You can see that if I run this, D87 is simply omitted, so I could simply delete that. It's important to remember here that if we have more than two time periods, we must include the time dummies. The reason for this is that when we do first differencing, only period one drops out. So if you have three periods, you'll still need a time dummy for period three. If you have four time periods, you'll need time dummies for periods three and four, and so on. We'll notice here that the change in unemployment coefficient is the same as the one that we estimated up here with the within estimator. And now the constant term is the same as the estimate on the time dummy from before. Again, we were able to get all these answers without including any of the ID city dummies. The reason for that is that cities don't change over time. So when we take the first difference of those dummies, they all simply drop out and we end up with the exact same results. This has been the basics of running fixed effects models and first differencing in Stata. If you have any questions, do let me know. Thanks for watching.